Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we are going to clear the flint tube of old degraded flint in the petrol insert for this vintage right point life lighter made in St. Louis, Missouri. It's a lighter that I've had for a good while. Not sure exactly why it has fallen on the back burner. And you can see that this insert, the entire system, is very similar to the Park Industries lighters. There is a leaf spring here on the back of the insert that interacts with this little notch on the lid. And as you can see, the flint spring and screw are screwed all the way in and the file wheel is just turning freely. When that occurs, the vast majority of the time, that means that you've got old degraded flint blocking the tube that needs to be dug out. We will start by removing our flint spring screw and that screw is pretty tight and that is probably because it looks like that felt pad maybe has gotten mixed in there as it was threaded in. So we'll try to separate that absorbent material from the screw. And that should be sufficient enough. Uh, flint screw there. Flint spring and screw, I should say. Here's our felt pad, which was somewhat torn up on the bottom side. Still in pretty good shape on the other side. And the wick and wadding that still look really good. Now, I'm taking that felt pad off of there just because I don't want to contaminate it, get it any more dirty or stained than it already is. So we will try just to spin this drill bit in the tube. I'm going to push that cotton out of the way a little bit. So we got less likelihood of contaminating it with flint dust debris. So now that we have this in here, we are just going to spin this bit. And there you go. That was about as easy a job as you're ever going to encounter. See that falling down there? The old degraded flint coming out of the tube. And you can also see now the drill bit making contact with the file wheel. So that should be clean enough. Bounce that back and forth, trying to scrape any residual concreted or dusted flint off the sides of the walls of that flint tube. Got some on my hands here. Get that wiped up. Wipe up our surface here. You can see all that that fell out of there. Pretty nasty. That is the nature of things with old degraded flint in these lighters though. Grab some can air and blow this out.
Shake out a flint here, courtesy of our buddy Robert Hollingsworth Jr. Let's go ahead and put our felt pad back on top of here. Man, this one is really jacked up on the bottom side. Okay, so we got all that there in place and that should work just fine even though it doesn't look so great. Get our flint and drop it right down the tube. And then we will drop our flint spring and screw down the tube and thread that in. Go ahead and groove our flint. Make sure we got everything going in the right direction. It's like a good solid spark. Figured I would be able to thread that in with my thumbnail because that's the way I got it out at least after initially using the butt end of these tweezers and this felt pad doesn't look so great the wick also is pretty dirty looking a lot of carbon there on the wick and in the windscreen but I figure we'll light it up and just see and then determine whether or not we need to replace the wick perhaps the wadding we shall see. In an effort to end the madness of overfilling lighters, I have decided to employ a dropper. I don't know exactly how many milliliters or what the volume would be, but we'll see just how many of these this particular lighter will hold. There's two. It looks like that has absorbed that just fine. Number three and four. And we don't have standing fuel or anything just yet. So I'm going to add a fifth. And a sixth. So six droppers full of what this particular dropper will pull up there and there is not fuel standing in it so now we will reinstall that into the lighter case and attempt to fire it up there we go so for the current time six droppers seems to be enough We'll see how that goes with other lighters. Here you have a vintage Right Point Life Lighter made in St. Louis, Missouri. The cool little nylon advertisement. Multicolor, looks like three different colors, blue, red, and cream. I think where it says Manchester, New Hampshire. Looks to me like that is the same blue as the background. But you will most likely see another video on this lighter and depending on how well it continues to ignite or doesn't ignite, you may see a 
re-wicking video for the slider as well. Until next time.